everyone. Welcome to your moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated Oh man, I love this guy. It's all blurry. I put on my glasses. The Z3. And I'm back after a rather long Uh Hello, happy people, and welcome to your Moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated to the most beautiful car in the world, the BMW Z3, or as the folks in London, Ontario call it, the Z3. I'm Mark, and today we have a visibility problem, much like that young man in his glasses, and ours, of course, is through a very common place, the rear plastic window on our convertible top, which gets yellowed and cloudied and scratched and just generally dirty uh, as it gets older. I've had this problem for a while. I've yet to tackle it. Thought it would be a good time to do it as I'm about to take a long road trip again in the car. So let's get right to it because unfortunately we don't have a Z of the week. Uh, no one sent me one. I'd love it if you did though for future videos. So please Take a look in the description with instructions as to how and love to feature your car on Zed of the Week on an upcoming episode. So off we go. Let's clean up that back plastic window. So there's the current condition of my rear window. And I'm not sure how well you can see it in this particular light, but it is scratched, yellowed, dirty, and has rub marks as well. Uh, so it's in pretty rough shape, something I've been meaning to get to for a while and I just haven't, but today we're gonna do it. And we'll take a look through it again at the end and see how much better it gets. So a few general tips before we get started on the work. Number one, as you can see, I've covered the area around the rear window with painter's tape and then I've gone a step further and covered the larger area around the window with towels, probably a little bit overboard but I'm using two aerosol products today and that can get a little messy. Another thing to keep in mind is what is the temperature you're working in? As you know, these plastic rear windows are very sensitive to temperature. They get very stiff when it's cold and they get very flexible when it's hot. So a little more worried about the hot. Uh, if it's too hot and you press too hard, you could deform or stretch your plastic window and you don't wanna do that. Uh, one way you could avoid this if it's very hot is you could have a helper on the other side of the window hold up a flat, stiff uh, object like a board or a book and press against you as you're pressing on the window. For me, I'm, I don't have a helper, so I'm just going to go ahead and not rub too hard on the windows. The temperature I'm currently working with is about 75 degrees, but it's rapidly climbing because it is Florida in late May. As you can see, I'm out of direct sunlight. I'm in the garage. And for the most part, I would say those are pretty good working conditions. There is one product that's out there that recommends that you do it in direct sunlight, that it's as hot as possible when you use it. But of course, follow manufacturer's directions all the time. Speaking of the products we're using, as I researched this video, I discovered there's probably a dozen products out there that will work for this. And there's a few videos out there that talk about different products. And I've linked those in the description. Uh, to be fair, there's some other good videos out there uh, about products that I didn't buy. So I really couldn't buy all dozen products or so and test them against each other. But I did buy two popular ones. Well, three technically. Two of them are going to be used together. What I bought was Plexus Plastic Cleaner. Now, this was a product originally developed to clean aircraft windows. It's since gained popularity in the motorcycle world for cleaning windscreens and helmet visors, uh, but it can also be used for our purposes today on the rear window. The other two products are the Invisible Glass. Uh, this is a non-ammonia-based glass cleaner, streak-free supposedly, aren't they all? Uh, but one of the keys to this is never, never, ever, never, ever, never, never use an ammonia-based product on the rear window that will give you poor results. So your typical Windex and all those blue glass cleaners, avoid those. Uh, along with the invisible glass, we're gonna use the Meguiar's Plast-X. This is a product originally developed for cleaning uh, headlight covers, uh, but it is used for this purpose as well. And we're gonna give the combination of these two products a shot against the Plexus, 
see which works better. Now the Plexus is a bit expensive. You, this is the small can. You can get the larger can on Amazon for around $30, $32. Uh, it just wasn't going to arrive in time for the video, so I went to a motorcycle store and bought the small can, which cost me about $27. The invisible glass and the Plastex are both about $6 or $7 each. You can get those on Amazon, and I'll put links to all those also in the description. So let's go ahead and do the Plexus side first. Now... One thing about the Plexus is it is flammable and poisonous. Uh, it contains naphtha, I believe. So keep that in mind, use it in a well-ventilated area. Uh, and I've been given advice about these windows that said you shouldn't use petroleum distillates on these, just like they say don't use ammonia. And then I've heard other people say, no, that's not true. So uh, again, the Plexus has been recommended by others. I'm gonna give this a shot. It's very simple, spray on a light coat, wipe off and buff, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I would have to tell you, it does kind of have a pleasant smell to it. Again, we're just taking the microfiber cloth. And another thing you'll hear about this job is that you should not use uh, swirl. You shouldn't swirl. You know how you put on or you take off wax, put on wax, take off wax on the metal parts of your car and you do it in small swirls or use a buffing pad with a machine that does it in swirls. Uh, the advice I get most often on these windows is don't use swirls because you might put swirl patterns into the plastic. So most folks say go east to west like I'm doing back and forth like this along the long axis of the window or go north to south. Uh, I'm gonna go east to west. Seems to make the most common sense to me. Hopefully I'm not wrong. Uh, this is very easy to use, I would say. It looks to me like the window is cleaner, just kind of, of course, you know, every time you change the angle or light on these windows, it looks different. But I would say overall, it looks cleaner. I do have some dirt on the uh, towel. It's kind of hard to see probably, but there is a little bit of dirt on the towel. Now, just so you know, last night I washed the whole car. All I did to the rear window was just take a damp uh, sponge on the outside and a damp microfiber cloth on the inside and just got the gross contamination and dust off of it, but I didn't do any actual cleaning yesterday on this window. So let me hit this with the dry part. And I would say that it looks better. Hasn't really taken any scratches out. Didn't expect it to, but it does look cleaner, definitely. So that's the Plexus. Obviously, you have to do the inside as well. That's gonna be requiring some contortions, which I'm not going to put on video, but don't forget to do the inside. And many people say that's the most important part, that that's the dirtiest part. So uh, we'll find out. All right, now we're going to go ahead and use the combination of the invisible glass along with the Plastex from Meguiar's. So I suppose you could use the Plexus first too and then hit it with the Meguiar's as well while I'm thinking of it. But of course, now you're getting a little bit more expensive. But we're going to try this invisible glass just to get the dirt off this window and then polish it up with the Meguiar's and see what kind of results we get. So the invisible glass is simple, just like the Plexus spray on wipe off. So we'll go ahead and do that. There we go. Goes on a little bit more like uh, Sprayways, another glass cleaner I used to use when I had my truck. Uh, but again, this is the same thing. I'm gonna go east and west to wipe this off. And again, you know it doesn't have the ammonia in it because they don't have that ammonia smell. And we flip it around. Not really seeing much dirt in the towel. And 
and I don't feel like that made a huge difference in the window, just kind of looking at it. But again, this is just step one of what's going to be a two-step process on this side. And I would say that it is streak-free though, but again, I don't see a huge difference, but let's go ahead and hit it with the Plastex and see what happens then. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap things up with the Plastex. Now we're gonna use two microfiber cloths, one to apply and one to remove. Now, also the directions say you could apply with a foam applicator pad. I just don't happen to have a clean one with me today. So I'll use the cloth to apply. One interesting thing I found is the directions say to remove it while it's still wet, which I found kind of different because usually on products like this, they say, you know, let things dry to a haze and then buff them out. But this one says remove while it's still wet. So we'll do the best we can. I think I'll do half the window at a time. Again, I'm going to work east to west and not in swirls and see what kind of results we get. So it does go on kind of like uh, a real thin uh, wax or a, kind of almost like a plastic restorer type thing. And definitely getting some dirt here as we rub it in. Again, I'm going to go ahead and do half the window. And go ahead and remove it while it's still wet. Again, I can't say I see a huge difference, uh, but I know a lot of the uh, issues with my window are on the inside, the rub marks you get from that constant folding and rubbing against the area behind the roll hoops. So uh, that doesn't surprise me, but I think it definitely looks better and I'll just go ahead and do the other half and I'll go inside and do the inside with both products off camera and see what kind of results we get. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done the inside of the window with the Plexus and the combination of Invisible Glass and Plast X from Meguiar's and I believe it is coming through on the camera. It seems like the Plexus side is clearer. It seems to have done a better job. Also, I would say that overall, it's much easier to use the Plexus, especially on the inside. The uh, Plastex from Meguiar's, the paste, the liquidy paste is, is really kind of diff difficult to use in there and work around the roll hoop. So that's important as well. Uh, overall, I would go with the Plexus. I guess you get what you pay for. Again, as I mentioned, there's other products out there that may or may not work better, uh, but I'm gonna stick with this and I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and this little blue stripe in the middle with the Plexus as well and call it a day. Hey, one thing I forgot to mention at last scene was that both sides of the window came out much clearer than they were before. Uh, both were fine. Again, I would go with the Plexus for the reasons I already talked about. Hey, if you found this content valuable, please gently but firmly push the like button below. Leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, please. And until next time, drive safe.